Hey guys, welcome back to this C++ game development series where we are creating a 2D snake game using C++ and SFML. In the last video, we added grass, four walls and food to our game. I had also added a to-do note in the gameplay class for adding the snake. So in this video, we will write the code to display snake and control its movement and also increase its length when it eats the food. So let's get started. As we have to increase the body of snake on the fly, it is not possible to use a single sprite object to represent the snake. Instead, we will use a list of multiple sprite objects to represent the snake. That way we can increase the number of sprites in the list and the snake will grow. Also, as the movement of snake will be controlled by user, it will require its own input handling mechanism. So to make things easy, we will create a separate class for snake. So I'll use the easy C++ extension to create snake.cpp and snake.hpp. Now let's start by defining the snake class in snake.hpp. First thing we need is a list of sf sprites. For this, I'll include the list header. I'm using list and not vector because we have to keep on adding more sprites as the game progress. If we use vector on adding of new sprite, the whole vector might get reallocated because vectors internally store data in an array and arrays cannot be dynamically increased without reallocations. So let's add a list of sprites and name it as m underscore body. Next I will create a method called init and just like state we will use this method to initialize the snake. We will need the texture that will be used for all the sprites of m underscore body. So I'll first add the texture.hpp header and then I'll add a texture parameter to init method. Next I'll add a move method which will take an object of sf vector. Basically, this method will move the snake in given direction. We will also need a method to detect if the snake has collided with some other object. For this, I'll add a method called isOn, which will take an object of SF sprite as parameter and will return true if snake is on that sprite. So we can use sprites of food and walls to detect collision with snake. Then we also need a method to grow the body of our snake. For this, I'll create a method called grow and it will take an object of sf sprite as input. Basically, we will add a new sprite at the head of the snake in given direction. And at last, we need a way to draw all the sprites from m underscore body on the render window. For this, we will need to use the drawable class. First, let's add the header for it. It is located under graphics module. If you go to the definition of drawable class inside drawable.hpp, you will find that it is very simple class with only one pure virtual method called draw. So the way this draw works is, whenever you pass an object to the draw method of render window, it checks if the object that you passed is derived from drawable class. And if that is true, the SFML framework calls this draw method on the object by passing the render window as render target. If you check the definition for sprite and text class, you will find that those classes are also derived from drawable. So let's go ahead and copy these method to snake class. We will also have to include render target and render state headers here. Also, this will be sf render target and sf render state. And snake will have to be derived from sf drawable publicly. We will also need to store two iterators to this list. These will be m underscore head and m underscore tail to represent the head and tail sprite of snake. These iterator will be needed in the move and grow methods. Now let's start implementing all these methods. For that, I'll just copy all these methods to snake.cpp file and let's add the snake class in front of all of them. In the constructor, I will initialize m underscore body with a list of sf sprites of length 4. This means that when the game begins, snake body will have 4 sprites. Next, I'll set the m underscore head and m underscore tail iterators. For us, the head will be last element added in the list, which is minus minus m underscore body dot end. Always keep in mind that dot end returns iterator to last element plus one. That is why we are writing here minus minus. M underscore tail will be the first element added in the list. This will be m underscore body dot begin. After this, let's go to the init method and set the texture for all the sprites of m underscore body with the input texture. For this, let's create a for loop and get each element as a reference. I'll also set the initial position of snake's body here. For that, I'll create a float x with initial value of 16. Basically, I'll be placing the snake at the top left corner of the playable area. So in the for loop, we can write piece.setPosition with argument as x, 16. And after that, I'll increment x by 16. 
This is done because all the sprites that I have made are 16 by 16 pixels. So at the top left corner of the window, we have walls and the playable area starts at 16 comma 16. This means the first sprite will be placed at 16 comma 16. In the next iteration, X will be changed to 32. So it will get placed at 32 comma 16 and so on. This will make sure that the snake appears as a continuous body at the top left corner oriented horizontally. Let's check if this is working as desired. For that, let's implement the draw method. This will be pretty simple. We just have to loop over the m underscore body and pass every element to draw method of the target. That's it. Now let's go to the gameplay.hpp file and replace the to-do node that we had added there with an object of snake class. And we also need to include the snake.hpp header here. Now to initialize this snake object, let's go to the init method of gameplay class in gameplay.cpp. Here at the very end, I'll call the init method of m underscore snake and will pass the snake's texture. We have already written the code to load the texture along with grass, food and wall. Next, we just have to draw the m underscore snake object on the render window. So just like what we did for any other sprite or text, we will go to the draw method and then pass the m underscore snake object to draw method of m underscore window stored inside m underscore context. This draw call will internally call the draw method of snake class which we had overridden from drawable class. Now let's build and run this code. And if I select the play option from main menu, you can see that the snake is displayed at the top left corner. This means the code to display body of snake is working properly. Now let's implement the move method of snake class. This move method is going to be called after fixed interval of time to keep the snake moving. But we are not actually going to move the whole body of snake. Instead we will just take the tail sprite and change its position such that it is placed right next to the head. This will create an illusion that the snake body is moving. So first I'll call the set position method on m underscore tail. This method needs a new position. As we want to set it right next to the head, I'll first get the position of m underscore head and then we'll add the input direction parameter to it. So depending on the value of direction, m underscore tail might get placed to left, right, top or bottom of m underscore head. After moving m underscore tail to new position, it will become the new head of snake body. This means we will have to update the m underscore head with m underscore tail. Also, the tail of snake body will change. It will now be the element next to old m underscore tail. So to change m underscore tail, I'll write plus plus m underscore tail. As m underscore tail is an iterator, there will be a point in our game when m underscore tail will reach the end of m underscore body. In that case, we will have to reset the m underscore tail to begin of m underscore body. And that is it. The code will now move snake in given direction. This move method will be called from update of gameplay class. But to call it, we will have to pass a direction. So let's add a new member in gameplay class to represent the current direction of snake. I'll call it m underscore snake direction. Let's initialize it to 16,0 in the gameplay constructor. This is basically the positive x direction. Next, we will have to change the direction depending on user input. For this, we will have to handle the key pressed event in process input method of gameplay. Here, I'll add an else if condition for event type equal to key pressed. Inside this, I'll switch on the key dot code to check which key was pressed. So let's check for up key. When up key is pressed, we'll change the direction of snake to 0, minus 16, which is upwards. In the same way, I'll add cases for down, left and right key press with appropriate x and y values. Also note that I'm using the value 16 here because each sprite in our game is 16 by 16 pixels. And now inside the update method, if we call move method on m underscore snake, it should move. There is one issue here, but let's build and run to see that issue. If I select play here, you can see that the snake is moving, but its speed is too fast. So to fix that, we will have to limit the number of calls to move method. For that, I'll add an SF time member in gameplay class called m underscore elapsed time. Now in the update method, I'll keep on adding the delta time in m underscore elapsed time. Let's also initialize elapsed time to SF time zero in the constructor of gameplay class. And now we can easily control calls to move depending on the elapsed time. I'll add a check to check if elapsed time is more than 0.1 seconds. And let's move the move call of m underscore snake inside this check. Also, I'll reset the elapsed time to zero before the call exits this if block. Now, this will make sure that the move method of m underscore snake gets called only after every 0.1 second. And we can check this by running the game. And yes, it is working as expected. The snake is moving with a reasonable speed now. And since we had implemented code to control its direction, we can move the snake using the arrow keys. 
As you can see, there are multiple things that we need to implement. First is, nothing happens when the snake crosses over the food. Also, the snake can change its direction to 180 degrees. We will have to block that. Also, right now we can move over the walls and the snake itself because there is no collision detection implemented yet. You will also notice that snake moves in a block of 16 by 16, which is good, but due to the height of render window, when we reach the bottom wall, the snake either stays too far from the wall or it intersects with the wall. This is because window height is not exactly divisible by 16. So to fix that quickly, I'll change the window height from 360 to 352 in game.cpp. And now if we run the game, you can see that the snake can move just touching the bottom wall. Now let's implement the isOn method of snake class. Here we just have to get the global bounds of the other sprite and call intersects method on it. As a parameter, I'll pass the global bounds of m underscore head of snake. This is because to detect collision, we just have to detect if the head of snake is on the other sprite. And intersect method does exactly the same. Next, let's define the grow method. In this method, we have to increase body of snake, which means we have to add a new sprite to m underscore body. So I'll create a new SF sprite object here called new piece. Then we will have to set texture to this new sprite. But we don't have a set manager here to get that texture. This is not a problem because we can get the texture from any of the sprites of m underscore body. Here I'll get it from m underscore body dot begin by calling get texture on it. Next we have to set the position of this new sprite so that it appears right next to the existing head of snake in the given direction. For this I'll get the current position of m underscore head and add the direction variable to it. This will increase the snake's body at head in the given direction. After setting the position, we now have to insert the new sprite into the m underscore body list. We will insert it just before m underscore head in the list. If you see the documentation of insert method, we will see that it returns an iterator to the inserted data. We can use this returned iterator to update the m underscore head. This is done because after adding a new piece, head of snake will be the new piece. And that is it. Now we have the ability to detect collisions and increase the body of snake. Now let's go to the update method of gameplay and write the code to detect if snake is on food and if so, we can call the grow method on snake. So in the if statement, I'll call is on method on m underscore snake and pass the m underscore food sprite to it. If this condition is true, I'll call the grow method on m underscore snake with input as m underscore direction. Also, we don't want to move the snake when it is growing. So I'll move the move call to the else part of this if block. Now let's build and run this code. And now if the snake passes over the food, its length will increase one sprite at a time. And you can see we still have to handle the self intersection and collision with wall. To detect collision with wall, we just have to call is on by passing the sprites of all the four walls. So I'll first add a boolean variable called is on wall here and set it to false. Then I loop over m underscore walls array and check if m underscore snake dot is on wall is true. If any of the wall intersects with the snake, we will break the for loop. Let's add a to do note here. We'll have to add the code to go to the game over state when snake hits the wall. Next, let's write the code to move the food at random position when snake intersects with it. Now to generate random numbers, you can use the random header from standard C++ library. But as this is just a simple game, I don't want to complicate it by adding the random number generator and random number distributor. Instead, I'll use the old rand and srand functions. For that, we need the stdlib.h and time.h header. First, I'll call the srand function in the constructor of gameplay. If you check the documentation of srand, you can see that it seeds the random number generator with given number. Basically, the random number generated by rand function depends on a seed value. This means that if the seed is same, the sequence of random number generated will also be the same. As I want to get different set of random numbers every time, I'll pass the current time to srand. This is done by calling time function with null pointer. Next, I'll go to the code where we check if snake is on food. Here, I'll create two integers, x and y. This will be the new coordinates for food sprite. We need the values of x and y within the limits of render window. For this, I'll call the rand function and will get the modulus of number returned by rand with width of window. I'll do the same thing for y2. And now we can set this value as new position for m underscore food. This will work but the values of x and y can turn out to be such that 
it lies on the walls. So to get rid of that, we will use the std clamp function. This function makes sure that the calculated value remains within the specified low and high values. So as the first parameter, I'll pass the whole modulus statement. Then I'll set the low value as 16 because actual playable area starts from x equal to 16 and y equal to 16. For the high value, I'll use the window width minus 2 times 16. 2 times 16 is required because the output value is going to be used as top left corner of food sprite. If we subtract 16 once, the food will still get placed on walls. I'll set this as x and now this line can be removed. And similar to this, I'll make changes for y too. I'll just have to change the get size.x to get size.y. Now let's build and run this code. And now if the snake head intersects food, our code will get executed and generate new random coordinates for food. There is one problem here. If I press the up arrow key when the snake is moving down, it will change its direction by 180 degrees. This does not feel right, so let's try to fix that. For that, we will have to compare the snake direction before and after the key press. But right now, we only have a single variable for snake direction. So I'll first go to the process input method and create a SF vector called new direction. This will store the updated direction as a result of key press. I'll replace all the m underscore snake direction with this new direction variable. Also, let's initialize the new direction with m underscore snake at the start. And now, after the switch block, we can write the code to detect if m underscore snake should be changed or not. This check will be simple. If you look at the y coordinate for up and down direction, we'll find that the absolute value for both are same. Similarly, for left and right, absolute values of y coordinates are same. And this is the condition in which we don't want to change m underscore snake direction. So in this if condition, I'll check that the absolute values of x coordinate of m underscore snake direction and new direction are not same or the y coordinates are not same. If this is true, then we can set m underscore snake direction as new direction. And now if I build and run this game, I cannot make the 180 degree direction change. So that was it for this video. We can now successfully move the snake around and eat the food to grow. Our game is almost complete now. In the next video, we will work on the game over state for which we have added this to do note. It will be much similar to the main menu state and if you want, you can try to make it yourself before watching the next video. So hope to see you in the next one.